What up, nerds? Welcome to another installment of the Final Wager and another edition in which we have flash flood warnings here in New York City. You might hear some thunder, you might see some lightning, things could get wild. Our favorite name ever has 6,400. He's in third place heading into final. Ed, the attorney, is at 17,800, and Anna is in second with 14,2. Let's start with first and second. Anna doubles up. She will have 28,400, so to cover her, Ed will need to wager 10,600. If he gets it wrong with that wager, he'll be left with 7,200. So to stay above him, Anna will need to wager at most 7,000. And uh, our third place player, come on, ah, there we go. He needs to get it right to have a chance. So he might as well wager everything. All right, let's erase that and look at second and third if doubles up. He's going to have 12,800. Man, I hope he wins tonight so I can keep doing this. And to stay above him can wager up to 1,400. Now I look at rule number three. If Anna wants to cover a zero wager by Ed, their difference is 3,600. And that is going to be more than Anna needs to wager to stay above a double up by third. So it's not quite a Shores Conjecture situation. She does have a bit of a predicament here. If she wants to cover a zero wager by Ed, if she's afraid that he'll wager small for some reason, then she'll have to put herself at risk to being overtaken by third. It might be worth it here. All right, let's, uh, is there one of the, oh yeah, the other thing would be to cover an unsafe wager by Ed. Anna would need to wager double that difference or 7,200. That's slightly more than she can wager to avoid falling below him if he does the minimum. Now we'll flip on over to our mind games, and let's look at what each player would do if their opponent made this alternative wager. Let's say that Anna wagers this 7,000 amount. In that case, she'd have 21,200. We've seen that number a lot lately, huh? So for Ed to cover that, he could wager 3,400. If he's wrong with that wager, he'll be left with 14,4, which means that Anna will have to get it right anyway, so she can't improve on that range. Now the second thing she could do from our basic wagers is wager 1,400. In that case, she gets a right, she'll have 15,600. That means Ed would need to cap his wager at 2,200. If he thinks that Anna's going to go small. If he's right with that wager, He'll need to, he'll have 20,000. So to cover that, Anna will need to wager 5,800 at least. So we'll make that her new minimum wager here. And one other thing I should clarify is she should make that 200 from earlier, her minimum wager here. So here are our ranges and yeah, those look good. Let's see what actually happened. Another embarrassing final Jeopardy clue out of our writers. Our third place player got it right and wagered 6,000, a little less than everything. That's fine. Over to Anna, who also got it right and wagered 5,800. Going for 20,000? Or did she calculate this mind game? I don't know. Didn't matter, because Ed got it right and wagered 10,600, which, again, wagering for the tie. I don't know what's going on here, if there's some sort of discussion that's been happening at the Radisson or wherever the players stay these days. But, 
tomorrow, if Ed has the lead and his second place player has enough to catch him, we could be looking at a tie. Funny, Arthur Chu's first tie happened in his second game on a Wednesday. Join me then to find out what actually happens on the final wager.